Hey, hey, there we go. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's Todd Nock, and I'm trying another uh, broadcast today. Uh, I did one earlier today, and um, I think a lot of people were at work, and it was hard for people to tune in, so um, I thought I'd do one here a little, little later in the day. I'm in, I'm in California, so West Coast time, so I thought I'd do one at 6 p.m. That gives the West Coasters time to get home from work, and all the everyone in the Mountain Central and uh, East Coast time zones are home now and hopefully able to tune in, and we can uh, get more people watching. So um, I appreciate y'all coming back if you were here earlier today, and if this is your um, first time, welcome. It's my second uh, broadcast here on... on uh, Periscope. So I um, plan on doing a Star Wars related character drawing and I was thinking about it. I think I want to draw Admiral Akbar. Admiral Akbar. Oh, it's 2 a.m. in London. I see here. Thank you. Uh, I am Skinja. I appreciate you uh, letting me know. Um, and I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for staying up. Um, so thank you. Oh, I see there someone says uh, they love the knock chops. I'll explain why I have these uh, chops here in just a moment. So uh, Admiral Akbar is one of my favorite characters. I think he's a, a great design, and you know he's, he looks goofy, but he's got that gruff voice, so he makes him really, uh, really entertaining, and and uh, I think a really cool character. So I thought I'd give him a give him a try here to celebrate May the Fourth before, at least here in the U.S., uh, the day uh, runs out on us. So um, what I'll do here is uh, hook my camera up to the rig and um, or the camera phone, I should say, in my iPhone six, and um, start drawing while we chat. Feel free to post uh, your uh, questions. Unfortunately, I sometimes forget to look at the camera because I'm so focused on the drawing that I, I mit, might miss your question. Um, <laughs> someone here just said I'm secretly Wolverine. Uh, I'm probably the exact opposite of Wolverine. Um, actually, on the, the X-Men, uh, which X-Men are you quiz, I test as Nightcrawler for both the movie version and the comic book version. I did not fudge my answers to get that, having drawn Nightcrawler for a year. It's it's the way it actually went down. So uh, I'd say if anyone, I, any X-Men, I'm closest to Nightcrawler. Um, and I am a part German, so that helps a lot too. But I digress. Uh, we're gonna. I'm going to try to read your questions while I draw. So if I do miss your question, feel free to post it again. I do want to try to cat, uh, answer as many questions as possible. So why do I have the chops? I'm going to a Doctor Who murder mystery on Saturday at uh, here in Long Beach, in California. So uh, I was trying to get a 10th Doctor cosplay going. So I've been working on these uh, sideburns for about a month. It's pretty sad what I can develop here in a month. I'm not... I, I, that's why I don't have a beard. It's just a lot of um, patchy uh, <laughs> facial hair. So, But I thought I'd try to get the chops going and, and skip a haircut, see if I can get enough David Tennant type hair going on top. So maybe I'll post some uh, pokes, uh, some pics of that on, on Twitter uh, this weekend. So that's that's why I got the chops there. So um, thanks for all the likes. I've been seeing the hearts uh, uh, spilling up there on the side. So I appreciate that support. And thanks for all the comments and questions so far. And like I said, feel, feel free to uh, post or repost a question if I don't get to it. So uh, let me hook up the camera here and let's uh, start, start sketching. Let's see. <laughs> like I said, second time I'm doing this, so I got. There we go. There we go. So here's my work desk area. Put the camera in the housing here, and I got a piece of board ready to go. Got some Admiral Akbar reference on my iPad, which is right up there. Oops, where did my Admiral Akbar reference go? There he is. So um, haven't drawn a lot of Admiral Akbar. In fact, I don't know if I've ever drawn Admiral Akbar. This could be very well be the very first time I'm drawing Admiral Akbar. So I, um, who's my favorite speedster hero? Impulse. I got to draw Impulse in the Young Justice series. He's my favorite uh, uh, speedster. Um, uh, thank you for the question. So um, let's get going here on, on trying to sketch out uh, Admiral Akbar. I hope y'all have been having a good May the 4th. I hope the, the 4th has been with you. And uh, your Facebook feed has been blown up with Star Wars memes for the day. So, um, what, let's see, CCC uh, United, I apologize, I can apologize if I can't read your handle. What's the best advice for drawing head shapes? Start with an oval shape now. <laughs> and, um... Uh, with uh, Admiral Akbar, he is going to be a completely different approach because, well, not completely different, but a very, I mean, his, his facial features are in uh, some uh, odd places, like his eyes are where his ears would be if he were a human, so that's going to change things up a bit. 
Uh, but generally, I start with a nice oval shape. Then I bisect that with the center line and the eye line, nose line, mouth line. But with Admiral Akbar, because he's such a freaky looking guy, uh, there's going to be um, a lot of different approaches here to um, how how he's going to look. He's got a very big, almost duck bill shaped mouth. And he's going to have these eyes here on the side. Let's go ahead and drop those in. I might need to pull the camera back up here a little bit. Appreciate y'all's patience. And uh, especially if I'm a bit scatterbrained as I uh, talk and draw at the same time. What kind of pencil is that? Thank you, Flash Gordon 23. Uh, this is the Uni Kuratoga Mechanical Pencil. Got it at jetpens.com. It's a 0.3 HB lead. It's a very fine point pencil. Um, and it takes a, a, a light touch so you don't uh, break, the, break the tip. And let's see, Ryan Reed said, will you be drawing any Force Awakens characters as they're revealed? Uh, very possibly. I'm actually going to try to avoid some, uh, spo uh, some of the trailers. I uh, have not watched any, uh, I didn't watch really any of the Avengers trailers before I saw the movie. And it was such an awesome experience. I want to avoid any more Star Wars trailers aside from the first two teasers. So, um, so I might not be doing many uh, Force Awakens characters uh, illustrations till maybe closer to the... The release of the movie just because I thought it was really cool not having seen anything from the Avengers before I went in to see it and it was so pretty much everything I was seeing was like brand new first time seeing it, it was a really fun experience so let's see Ak Akbar has these uh, weird nostrils here on the side Let's see, um, CC Brawl United asks, if you could work on any future book, what would it be? Oh, man, um, you know, I'm always open to, to other projects, uh, you know, different types of projects. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working on all sorts of different books, but um, I would say, gosh, I, you know, continue to work in the X-Men would be fun, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, I always love working on Spider-Man, uh, over at DC, uh, I've made it no secret I'm a big Booster Gold fan, so a Booster Gold or Justice League International type book would be a lot of fun. So those are some books I, I would enjoy doing, I, I believe. Well, some I know because, you know, I have a chance to work with some of those characters already, like Spider-Man and, and X-Men characters. I'll see. C, C. Corbin is uh, saying I'm drawing Phoenix right now. Any tips? Uh, let's see. Um... Well, I don't know where you're at in your illustration, so uh, I would say uh, when drawing females, uh, be very, very careful with the number of lines you put in there. The more lines you put on a person's face, the more you can age them or, or uh, make them look gruff. So since Jean Grey is a fairly, fairly young character, um, you want to use fewer lines to, to maintain that, that sort of youthful look. Let's see. I am Skinja asks, how does drawing for image differ from drawing for one of the big two? Um, well, when I, I do my books at Image uh, for my, my Wild Guard creator owned series, that's pretty much, I'm pretty much self publishing. So there's, you know, I'm not going to get a regular paycheck. Uh, but when doing a book for like Robert Kirkman, he's funding the book, so he cuts me a check. So really, depending on who I'm working for, it's really not that much different. So let's see, Logan. One, Anderson asks, who's your favorite X-Men besides Nightcrawler? Uh, again, I, I make it no secret that I'm a huge Kitty Pride fan. I love Kitty Pride. Rogue, Iceman, Colossus, those are probably, along with Nightcrawler, are my top five favorite X-Men. But I'm also a big fan of Havoc, Dazzler, Longshot, Psylocke, um, especially the Psylocke before she became a ninja. I'm one of the, probably one of the few people who are pre-ninja Psylocke fans. Uh, Storm, even Cyclops, I mean, anyone for the, the first five X Factor characters love them. So, um, because I grew up in the 80s, I'm an 80s kid. So, uh, those are my uh, favorite favorite characters. Oh, I just missed that last question. Sorry, sorry, I didn't uh, catch you there in time. Feel free to repost that if, if you'd like. Let's see, Comic Book Dude. Hey, welcome back. I saw you earlier today, Comic Book Dude. When did you realize you had your own style? I ask because I can't seem to find my own. Oh, great question, Comic Book Dude. Uh, you know, I, uh, I, I mentioned earlier today um, in the first broadcast, I had my initial comic book influences. 
as an 80s kid. Favorite X-Men artists, Arthur Adams, Rick Leonardi, Alan Davis, and Walter Simonson. Now, I, I, uh, those guys really influenced me, and, and people can often see the, the Rick Leonardi and Arthur Adams influence in my work especially. But the more I... Um, the more I worked at drawing and not look referencing their art, you know, as I moved away from, from that, the more my style came into being. And the more I draw from real life, the more my style came into being. So really, I encourage young artists, don't worry about finding your style. Your style will find you, is the way I like to put it. Just, um, just draw, just interpret life through your filter. And when you get into drawing comics and you've had those deadlines, you don't have the luxury of pulling up your favorite comic book arts, artist's work to inspire you. You just have to just jump in and start drawing and meet that deadline. And when you're under that kind of uh, pressure, under that kind of uh, constraints, you, you kind of rise to the challenge and you find your shorthand to how do you need to draw certain things in a certain way to um, uh, get the job done and to get uh, the illustration you know, looking right, and 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 then then your style starts to starts to develop. So um, I hope that I hope that kind of helps you there. So just keep on drawing. Don't worry about finding your style. Your style will emerge, and really draw from real life when as as much as possible. Let's see. I uh, just missed a question there. Um, let's. Uh, I am going to ask what what's your thought process when reading a script to laying out a page. You know, I kind of when I read a script, I um, I see it kind of play out in my head I, I, I it kind of plays out like a movie and then I just kind of freeze frame it and then illustrate you know I choose that 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 shot to uh, put in the in as the uh, as the panel and uh, for the for the um, for the page I, I kind of show you all the freeze frames of of my of my brain um, uh, drawing drawing the uh, Freeze frame of my brain reading the comic, like how it, it I see it playing out in my head. And um, some writers write really detailed stuff, and they make it very clear. Some writers write a little more loosely, and I get to really interpret that that story the way I want. So there's lots of different uh, approaches to that um, when, when drawing. Let's see. Um, Ryan Reed, Ryan Seven Reed asks, "How did you get started with your post-it note sketches?" You know, it started uh, last uh, last fall, fall of 2014. I wanted to do a quick warm-up sketch for the day. Kind of had a groggy start. Wanted to kind of shake off the cobwebs. So I just wanted to do a quick little sketch. So that little sketch, you know, I, I just wanted a little piece of paper. So I grabbed one of the smaller pieces of paper in my office, and that happened to be post-it note sketches. You know, there's a, a post-it note, a pad of post-it notes sitting right there. So I just grabbed those and drew up a Spider-Man and... Uh, and that and that was pretty much that was pretty much it. Didn't really think much about it. Posted it on online and on my different social networks, and and people, you know, said they liked it and wanted to see more. And so I did a few more and kind of fell out of out of it around Christmas time. And then, uh, or for the through the next couple of months with the crazy holidays and stuff, and kind of found a found a break to start trying it again. And then then it really kind of took off. So. Uh, so it just started off as uh, just kind of a basic warm-up sketch. And, of course, then with each one I do, I want to do a uh, more and more detailed illustration. So now they're, they're more than just uh, warm-up sketches. They're warm-up illustrations. I, I really put a lot of time and energy into them. So um, so here's the basic, fairly basic uh, shot of, um, of Admiral Akbar. Um, a lot of this, a lot of this, will come together in the inks, and then I ho hopefully we'll have time to throw down some marker, co uh, Copic marker coloring on there, uh, to, and, and then it'll really come together. So I'm not even gonna bother to draw on the spots. Let's see. Uh, Dick's artist asks if I'm going to be at uh, Heroes Con in North Carolina. Unfortunately, I won't be able to make it there this year. I really hope to be there, but it just didn't work out with my schedule, so I will not be at Heroes Con this year. But I love Heroes Con, and I hope to be back in a. <coughs> pardon me in a in a future year, hopefully next year if I can. And will I be at Des Moines? No, I won't be at Des Moines, but I will be at uh, Motor City. I'm not sure, let's see, Des Moines, that's, uh, Des Moines is Iowa, so I guess I'll be a bit north of that, so I don't know how far, um, how far Michigan or, uh, Michigan or uh, Detroit is from there. Won't be coming back to Dallas, unfortunately, um, but I will be at, at uh, New York Comic Con. Yes, I, uh, someone's asking here, Sonic Ninja, is that Sonic Ninja? Asking if I was going to be at New York. I've been to every New York con since they started that con back up in uh, 2006. 
and uh, it's one of my favorite conventions, so I'll, I'll definitely be there. So now I'm using the Copic SP Multiliner using a .7 tip. It's a, one of the, the, the larger sized uh, pen tips, so I can uh, get some nice bold lines going here. Let's see, um, CC Bra United. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, I'm just gonna call you United. What, um, hope I'm saying that right. Yes. Where's some advice on inking, inking characters? Um, what is some some advice? Uh, you know, it's uh, be be mindful of your line weights um, and the shapes that you're interpreting. Uh, you want to maintain clarity in what you're putting down on on the paper um, so that uh, the the viewer knows what they're looking at uh, to be careful not to over render uh, a piece you know sometimes we think adding more lines will um, make a piece look better and it's like especially if we're feeling like we're not feeling good about the piece and it's like uh, this this part isn't working so I'll throw more lines here to hide my flaws oftentimes from my experience the extra lines don't really hide the flaws it just the flaw is still there, and now you've got a bunch of extra lines on top of it, accentuating the facts. So, um, uh, pretty much, if you want to hide a flaw, big black sections can be, is, is the way to go. Uh, like what the I think it's the Wally Wood, uh, legendary comic book uh, uh, cartoonist Wally Wood's uh, uh, credo: "When in doubt, black it out." So, um, so if you want to hide something, use heavy shadows. I would say, but uh, really, it's just. Um, we're our own worst critics, so the more we can learn not to be so critical of ourselves, the the the, the we'll, we'll, we we can make better choices when we get to our inking stage. Um, but that takes a lot of time and practice and uh, uh, dis discovery, self discovery in, in a sense, or at least that's been my experience. So you want to keep in mind the light source at times, and. Uh, where you're going to have your thicker lines, which would, uh, in a sense, give a, 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 a sense of shadow. And uh, thinner lines would be where the light would be hitting. And oftentimes the light is coming from above in many of our just basic illustrations, or at least I have found that to be the case. Oh, it looks like I am Skinja is drawing along to this, and that they will link me when they're done. That's really cool. They that you you can draw right, right along. This is done in real time, as opposed to many of my YouTube videos, which are uh, sped up. Um, so, um, and and these uh, broadcasts, I do plan on putting them on um, on my YouTube channel afterwards. So the one earlier today, which had really weird, weird sound, I kind of sound like a robot in the first one here, and in, in the the the. The YouTube format, I've, I'm, I'm getting that uploaded to YouTube, and I noticed that the sound sounded kind of weird. I kind of sound a little bit like a robot. Not quite, not, not quite like a Cylon Centurion or a Soundwave from Transformers, but it does sound a little robot -y, so I, hopefully I can figure out how to keep that from happening for future videos and broadcasts or, or posting future broadcasts. Let's see. Oh, oh, a wonton six asks, "How long does it take you to uh, do a head sketch full colored?" Depends on the character. Um, if it's Spider-Man, I know Spider-Man almost like the back of my hand, so uh, I can draw Spider-Man fairly quickly. But another character, like uh, say that I'm not familiar with, like uh, Admiral Akbar here, it's going to take me a bit more time because, uh, uh, or if a character has heavy detail, that's uh, like um, like uh, Galactus or or movie Bane, Bane from the Batman movies with that weird face mask thing. That's going to take a long time. I was actually grousing about movie Bane in uh, today's earlier broadcast. I might not ever draw movie Bane again because I don't like drawing that facial thing. Let's see, United asks, how often do you reference characters when you're just breaking into, when you're just breaking into comics? Um, you know, it depends on how familiar I was with the character. And I, even now, I still reference characters if I haven't gotten to draw them on a regular basis to make sure I get their costume right. And a lot of char characters' uh, costumes are often changing. So um, 
um, like when I had to draw Wolverine in my Nightcrawler series, he had gotten his uh, samurai armor because he had lost his healing factor. So I had to, you know, look at uh, the different artists that had drawn and designed the the, the new uh, Wolverine. Oops, that's kind of off screen there. Apologize for that. Uh, I'm not used to working in a portrait uh, mode here in my, on my phone. Usually I do my stuff landscape, so I'm hoping that Periscope will change or allow us to do landscape videos in, in the not too distant future. It worked better for these art videos for my, for my taste. So, um, so I had to reference the Wolverine, um, Wolverine design so that I, I mean, I've seen Wolverine since I was a little kid, but, uh, you know, I know what Wolverine looks like, but to get his new costume, right. You know, I had to reference that. So, um, but the more I start drawing a character on a regular basis, 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 the more I can um, draw the uh, draw them from memory. So nothing wrong with looking up reference, uh, in my opinion, for whatever it is you're drawing, whether it be backgrounds or animals or vehicles or or, or characters themselves. You want to. There's nothing wrong with 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 uh, looking at visual reference. Different pencil now, uh, Flash Gordon. Twenty. Uh, I missed your number there. Twenty three asks. No, this is a a Copic multiliner uh, pen for uh, the inking stage. So I just used the one pencil, the Kuratoga pencil. Now I've moved on to uh, the inking stage for the uh, the nice sweet black lines. Now, fun thing about a character like uh, Admiral Akbar here is that he's got. He's such, you know, he's like a, he's such a fishy-faced sort of character. There's a lot of uh, weird folds and and uh, wrinkles and uh, facial details that are fun to play with. But I want to be very thoughtful and mindful of of where I'm placing the striations, like of his neck. To make sure I don't muddy it or clutter it, I want to make sure his mouth is uh, has has um, the right dimensions to where it looks like it's coming from his off, you know, protruding from his face, and um, and that my my detail lines are very deliberate. Uh, let's see, let's see if I can catch some of these questions. Ah, they're they're fading out. I need to, they need to. Well, one, I guess I need to stop looking at the art so much. It's a a challenging way to do these uh, broadcasts to. Um, uh, draw and then come and try to read while I draw. Let's see. Comic book dude asks, "Does it hit home when you see your favorite characters on the big screen?" Oh, oh yeah. It, it's it's like a childhood dream come true, especially like with the Avengers: uh, Age of Ultron movie. Absolutely, as I was talking about before in the first broadcast, I loved it. And so I can't wait for X Men Apocalypse to get to see Nightcrawler um, bouncing around on the stage, especially after having spent a year drawing the characters. So that's going to be that's going to be extra special in that regard. Let's see. Do I re currently read any comics? Uh, I only missed the, got the first part of your question, but yes, I do read comics. I'm still a comic book fan. Uh, <coughs> still have a pull box at my comic shop, so they're always pulling my favorite books. And uh, so I um, I uh, do still read a lot of comics. I read Marvel stuff. Uh, picked up the DC Convergence stuff. I like that they're kind of bringing some of that classic stuff in got the new booster gold and blue beetle books so i need i'm looking forward to um reading those so um and then i read you know the kirkman stuff walking dead and invincible i've been an invincible fan since since day one so um so yeah definitely uh reading the still reading comics on a regular basis try to keep on top of everything or at least the books that i really like let's see a uh, wanton's uh six asks if i were to is uh, asked if a commission online was possible. Uh, I do have a commission list. There's a wait list. Send me an email. Uh, you can find that on uh, the Todd of, Art of Todd Knock uh, um, or just toddknock.com on the About page. Don't post a comment. Find the actual email address and shoot me an email so that I can get you on uh, get you the info on, on, on how to get on my wait list. So, um, so that's where you can find my email address. Like I said, don't leave a comment on the About page. Um, shoot me an email from the, the email listed on, on that page there, and you can get more information about commissions. But it's, like I said, it's a pretty long wait, so it's uh, good to get on the list now. Let's see. Someone here asked what cons I'll be attending. Those are all listed on toddknock.com, but real quick here, uh, Motor City Con in two weeks, Phoenix, 
uh, San Diego Comic Con, hopefully Long Beach Comic Con, uh, La Mole, I believe I'll be at, and um, where else? Uh, New York Comic Con for sure. Uh, I, I, those, those are the ones kind of on, on deck at the moment. Still a few, few more uh, convention dates I might be able to swing here. So stay tuned to toddknock.com. Subscribe to my RSS feed so you'll always get an update as to where I'll be next. And also what projects I'll be working on next as well. Appreciate you guys liking this video here. I appreciate seeing all those hearts. I appreciate it. Let's see. Hopefully see you at C2E2 next year. Yes, that would be great. I was disappointed I couldn't make it there this year. Coke or Pepsi? Uh, i got to be honest, neither. I'm not a cola dude. I don't really care for cola. I'm from Texas, so for me, it's all about Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper is my, my, my soda of choice. So um, to answer your question, um, can't do Coke or Pepsi. It's just, it just doesn't appeal to me. Unless it's a Coke float. Then I can do it, and then it doesn't really matter to me. Cola, cola is cola. Uh, when it, in that regard. Looks like I got some fellow Dr. Pepper fans there, so uh, let's see. Oh, someone asked here, uh, United asks, Sue Storm or Rogue? Easy answer, Rogue. Huge X-Men fan, Rogue is in my top five favorite X-Men. Easy, easy answer. So, uh, But I do like Sue Storm a lot. She is, she is a great character as well. So I'm going to just kind of tighten up the irises of his eyes here. Okay, comic book dude asks, not comic related, but what games did you play growing up? Well, let's see. As I said, I was an 80s kid, so that means I played with an Atari 2600. Yes, one of the more old, old, old school games. So, you know, I played, my favorite game on there was the Empire Strike Back, Strikes Back game. That and Dragonfire. Those were my two games. Now, I, I, I used to play a lot of video games in the arcade, and my favorite there, especially after I graduated high school and I worked two different jobs, I was a grocery sacker in the day and then I worked at a movie theater at night, that hour or two in between my two jobs, I'd go to the, the mall and play, um, and play video games, and my favorite there was Heavy Barrel. I love Heavy Barrel. If you haven't played Heavy Barrel, oh man, get yourself a buddy and, uh, and go play Heavy Barrel. That's, that's a fun one. In fact, I need to see if there's like a an emulator for Heavy Barrel. I'd love to play Heavy Barrel. I haven't played that since I was uh, like 18, 19 years old. So um, that that would be a really fun game to revisit. I have some friends who have one of those tabletop Miss Pac-Man games, and it's got games on there like Dig Dug and Puyan. And playing those, man, takes me right back to junior high. I love Dig Dug. So um, those are some some of the games I like playing. Uh, video games I like playing. Thanks for the question, man. Let's see, any Mortal Kombat comic dude asks? Uh, I have played Mortal Kombat, but not a lot. Um, not, not, um, yeah, not, not enough to really say I'm a big Mortal Kombat, uh, you know, gamer or anything like that. So, I, unfortunately, I'm not too hip to, to much of the Mortal Kombat. But I'm definitely not opposed to it, I just haven't had a lot of opportunities to, to play it. All right, so I think I've got some decent inks going here. Uh, this is just more of a quicker sketch for Akbar. Oops, let's see. Uh, did you ever watch any anime? Uh, I didn't quite catch all your question there. Again, still f focusing so much on the art here. Um, uh, oh, real quick question. Uh, uh, Je Jedi Scum here asks, what's with the heart floaty hearty things? Those are people liking it. If you just tap the screen, that shows you're liking it. The more likes I get, the further I move up in the um, the Periscope um, most liked videos app. So the more you like it, the more you're supporting me, the more chance more people will see this video as on, on their Periscope app. And and so so every time you guys tap hearts. That's 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 uh, showing a lot of support for me. So I want to say thank you guys for for all the hearts that y'all have been throwing my way. So uh, as far as anime, um, I didn't have access to a lot of anime growing up as a kid, especially uh, in the 80s. So for me, it was G-Force, Battle of the Planets. 
uh, Star Blazers, Force 5 Shogun Warriors, Dan, Dan Gardace was one of my favorite uh, giant robots, Guy King. So that, that's a lot of where my anime was. And uh, I think Speed Racer falls in there as well. Um, so I, I don't, uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't really, I kind of missed out on the Dragon Ball Z um, uh that whole thing. I'm familiar with Dragon Ball Z, and I appreciate it, but I just had, didn't get a chance to watch a lot of it. Robotech either. I missed out on that because I lived in such a tiny East Texas town that we didn't get the channel that showed um, Robotech or Voltron. I remember going to visit my cousin and who lived in Dallas, and he got all the, the great channels and uh, getting to see... Um, Voltron there and just flipping out. I couldn't get enough of it. I wanted to move to Dallas so that I could watch Voltron on a on a daily basis. But for me, uh, Star Blazers and Battle of the Planets were my two big animes. Where in Texas am I from? I'm from East Texas. Uh, my dad was in construction, so I grew up all through the East Texas area. Um, bounced all around there, about 100 miles east of, of Dallas. Sinister Six versus Suicide Squad. Who takes it? Uh, ooh, well, you know, I, I, I don't think I want to step into the middle of that. I think, I think there's still more, more to be seen with, uh, what's to come between those two movies. So I think it's too, too, too early to tell, too early to tell for me. All right. So there's our inks for Akbar so far. So let me, uh, let's see if we can start throwing some color in on here using my Copic sketch markers. There's my collection right over the raise. Whoops, and I just switched back to me. You don't want to see this guy. Let's switch it back. All right, so um, let's get some colors going. Um, so looking at Admiral Akbar, he's kind of reddish, brownish, pinkish, orangish is maybe the best way I'm going to go here. So uh, so I'm going to start with kind of this uh, orangish orangish brownish color as a base. What's on your shelf behind you? Um, I really don't have a shelf behind me. I have a shelf in front of me and a shelf to the side. The stuff on the shelf in front of me are, I've got some Pop Funkos that I've been gifted by some great fans and friends. Uh, I've got a, a Metaluna Mutant. I've got uh, Cyclops, Wolverine, and Colossus. And I also have a Rick Rick uh, Grimes over on my bookshelf. I need to add him, put him here with my uh, Pop Funkos. I also have a Jim Lee era Beast from the X-Men, a uh, Marvel Legends action figure that I picked up at a, at a Comic Con for uh, about five bucks. How do I determine the highlights? Well, um, considering where my light source is, uh, I, I just kind of imagine where, where the... Um, where the light would be hitting and just leave the white of the board there just leave the white of the board open and i can and i can always blend into it if i need to to um to make uh to fill that area up so uh it's always easy to put marker onto the page you can't take it off so so i leave that part i leave that part open a bit and it's a lot of it comes with trial and error, but that's how I determine my uh, my highlights. So if a light is coming down this way, I'm going to leave a lot more white up that way. Now this is my first time to color a, a Admiral Akbar, so there's going to be a lot of experimentation on here as well, just kind of just kind of giving things a go and seeing what works. You know, employing the things that I know, but um, also because it's such a weird shape and I've never colored a, a character of this design or or uh, shape it's gonna it's gonna take some uh, creativity and some imagination to imagine how these uh, shapes and I'm still looking at my photo reference here my return of the Jedi photo reference that I pulled up on my on my uh, iPad and I'm gonna be coming in here with a lot more colors too to blend this all together Let's see, Ryan Reed set, Ryan Seven Reed says, looks going to look great on Instagram. I'll definitely be posting a, a shot of this on Instagram. Um, you can, if you're new to my work, you can find me on Instagram. About to hit 50,000 followers on there. And I'll do a new, new uh, giveaway on Instagram when I hit 50,000 followers. So that sh that'll be coming up real soon. So if you want a chance at winning some free art, make sure you're following me on uh, Instagram. Oops, and my iPad just timed out. Get my reference back. 
Let's see, comic book dude asked, did I finish watching Daredevil? You know what? I'm going to be completely honest. I haven't had time to start. I have not started watching Daredevil yet. I know I'm a terrible comic book fan. My wife and I discovered Broadchurch, and we just watched Series 1. Uh, please know Series 2 spoilers. Um, so we really enjoyed that that uh, mystery. Um, and, so, and then Doctor Who. We're going through Doctor Who th for the first time, so please no Doctor Who spoilers either. Um, and uh, Sherlock. So a lot of our favorite shows right now are the UK shows. So I haven't had a chance to watch um, Daredevil yet. But it is in my queue. I've heard awesome stuff about it. So I will be... Um, I will be uh, tuning in to Daredevil, hopefully here. Uh, ideally, I'd like to at least... I want to see it before the other uh, Defenders uh, TV series uh, hit, hit Netflix. So, so I, need to, I need to get to work on, on, some, on some Daredevil watching. Let's see. Uh, United asked, did you take any art classes or go to college for art? Uh, yes, I did. I took... Uh, Took an after-school art class as a little kid in, in fourth grade, um, and that was pretty helpful. You know, it was, it was good just to be amongst other artists and, and start learning some things. Uh, now I'm coming in here. Let's see. The, the, the previous marker, if you're if you're playing along at home, was a YR27. It's kind of that orangish brown, and my my current marker here that I'm now using is the R24. R24 is one of my favorite shades of red here. I use it for a lot of my Spider-Man, my Nightcrawler, pretty much it's my go-to red. So I'm going to drop some red in here on on, uh, on Akbar and blend it in through this orange here to create different shades by layering the colors and cutting back into the white as well. And I'll be putting on the spots on his head here a little bit later on once I get the base of his um, his his uh, Skin? We're gonna call this skin exoskeleton. I don't know. He's, well, what is the biology of a Mon Calamari? So, um, so I did take. Oh, uh, let's see. I took some. Uh, back to the question at hand. I took some art classes in high school, as my uh, high school electives, my my junior and senior year, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, then I went to the Art Institute of Dallas and I studied commercial art and graphic design and applied everything I learned there to drawing comics. They didn't teach me anything about comics. I had to really be a self-starter there and apply what I was learning there to drawing comics. Again, I appreciate all y'all's support. Thanks for, for liking what I'm doing here. <laughs> be interesting to see where I'm falling in the whole, the whole uh, Periscope videos. Hopefully moving up the ranks that people might be able to, who may not follow comic book art, might discover this and, and tune in and check it out and maybe become interested in comic books or the art of comic books. Let's see, how do I get stains off, a neat, uh, off of a water brush? Uh, I haven't had that problem, so I wouldn't be able to answer that question, unfortunately. Mine, my, uh, my water brush has stayed stayed pretty much stain free and then the question after that I missed so if you'd like to repost your question I'd be happy to answer Does the work that I submit uh, see Jedi scum asked if the work I submit to Marvel is colored in Copic or uh, colored digitally um, I don't color my work I, I work with a colorist and uh, Rochelle Ro Rosenberg is the most recent colorist I've been working with on Nightcrawler so she colors di digitally if I do like a say like a um, a character design and I want to throw some colors on there to show the editor what the costume looks like I might do either a digital or Copic uh, illustration there so they can uh, kind of see some of the colors that I would want the, the, the character to be colored as uh, for the colorist's reference but um, a lot of time I mean uh, I've never co uh, Copic colored a comic but it could be a lot of fun I know some artists uh, do grayscale Copics for their comics and then then um, the colorist will color over the those grayscale with the digital actual colors. Um, can't think of the comics that have done that in the past, but I know that that some all right. Seems like that's that's kind of the way it's gone down. So now I've switched over to the R fifty six R fifty six. It's almost like we're playing bingo here. Uh, is for a darker shade. I want to get some start getting some more sculpting here now that we've got the basic Akbar skin tones down.
And if you are playing at home and you're, you're drawing along with me and you, you're you going to have your renditions of Akbar, please uh, feel free to tag me in those so I can come by and see what you've done. I'll try to comment if I can. Can't always promise that I'm able to do that. I get a lot of people requesting me to check out the work and it's I do get a chance to peek even if I don't get a chance to comment. There's a lot going on. I get a lot of those types of requests, but I do appreciate when y'all tag me that I can at least come and take a peek. So I uh, know that I do see almost everyone that, that y'all tag me in, so I want to say thanks for that. Again, I appreciate all that support as well. It's just hard to respond to them all when, when, you, when you get a lot because there's a lot of responsibilities I have during the day to get my artwork, artwork done and meet those deadlines and actually live life and get a meal and catch a catch a few winks so I appreciate that and I've um, been focusing here a lot on, on Akbar here so I've, I think I've missed a few questions so I apologize if I missed those uh, feel free to repost at any time so I think Akbar is starting to come together here a bit um, color wise I think people at least recognize him as Akbar All right, let's go up to another notch on the red scale, which is my R59, R59, just a little darker. See, I think someone asked if I'd be giving this one away. I don't know if I'll be able to give this one away. I need to do more research on how to um, <coughs> uh, work a, a Periscope giveaway, how to track people or how to find someone to, to give away. So I, I will be doing giveaways in the future. Uh, if I'm not able to give this one away, I will try to um, do a giveaway, you know, randomly giveaway. I hope to do a lot of these videos so I can't give away every every illustration, but I do do a lot of giveaways as it is on my Twitter, on my Instagram, so uh, sketch raffles and stuff. So if you're not following me on those sites, please do. I do all sorts of different types of contests during my convention appearances. Uh, I do random art Easter egg art hunts. I started doing those at uh, at uh, WonderCon because it was Easter, so I thought let's do an Easter egg art hunt. So I do give away a lot of art as it is. So um, so if I'm not able to, you know, so I yeah I, I get a lot of art out there, and there are a lot of opportunities. So um, thank you for asking. Let's see, uh, what DC movie am I anticipating the most? Um, the Booster Gold movie. I know there's no Booster Gold movie in the works, but I'm secretly sitting and hoping and waiting and anticipating for that for that movie because, like I said earlier, if you, in case y'all just tuned in, huge Booster Gold fan. I really enjoyed the Booster Gold episode of Smallville back in the last season of Smallville. If that had gone to series, I would have totally tuned in for that. I even told Jeff Johns, love the episode. Please make the series. I'd totally watch it. All right, so now I want to kind of blend a lot of this in together. So I'm going to move to a lighter, um, lighter shade of red. What about the movie they're making based on Ultimate Fantastic Four comics? You know, I thought from United, uh, thanks for asking that, United. You know, I saw the trailer for the first time when I went to see Avengers. It looked interesting. It looked like a lot of fun. I mean, it's not the Fantastic Four I grew up reading or the cartoons I watched. But I'm okay with the differences, you know. It's it's the movie version. It's it's um, something I'm willing to, to check out. The, the, the I found the trailer to be pretty exciting. So I'm willing to, to give it a shot, for sure. As long as the story is good and 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 keeps me engaged, then then that's that's really, really what I'm I'm, I'm kind of looking for there. So um, it, I don't have to be a, you know a complete purist um, for the movies necessarily. It's, it is fun to see the things I've read in the comics translated into film, and I really appreciate that and enjoy that. But um, I'm also open to uh, to uh, to new, new new stuff, new ideas, you know, because the movie telling. Uh, format is is going to be different than uh, the comic book format because in the comic books, it's or it's just a whole different way of telling a story than it is a movie. And that's why I think I like comic books so much is that we get that serialized story for months and months on end. Let's see, comic book dude asks, do you have any key issues in your personal collection of comics? Comics and what are the most memorable? Um, let's see, key issues. I'm not sure quite sure what you mean by key issues. 
uh, comic dude, could uh, would you mind uh, clarifying? By what, what you mean by key issues? It's okay if you can't. I can just kind of answer as best I can. But I figure since you're here, since I'm here, if you don't mind uh, clarifying key issues, that would really help me try to answer your question more more accurately. Oh, like Death of Gwen Stacy, first appearances? You know, I got the first appearance of Deadpool. I've got like three copies of that because back in the early 90s, we were all speculators and buying multiple copies. So I ended up having three copies, two or three copies of that. First appearance of Cable, Apocalypse. So, so, but those are a lot of my favorite comics. So I'll never get rid of them because I love reading them um, because those are some of my favorite comic book series. Um, first appearance of Venom. So, uh, so yeah, I do have some first appearance comics for sure. Let's see, we need some yellow, <coughs> pardon me, some yellow on uh, Akbar's eyes. So I'm a Deadpool fan. I enjoy Deadpool. I'm, I'm, I, I do appreciate Deadpool. I wouldn't say I'm a hardcore fan, but, but I, I do think he's a fun character. So I'm coming in now here with some Y13. It's one of my go-to yellows. It's kind of a nice muted yellow to get a, a nice base going on here. Gonna darken it up with a little Y08. Again, thanks for all the likes, guys. I really appreciate that. Y08, Antoine06, who asked what yellow was that? Y08 was the most recent yellow I've put. Started with the Y13, moving up to the Y08. Gonna come in with some Y35. That's a Y35. It's a bit darker. And I want to use a brown. I think I'm going to go for a brown here in his eyes. So I'm going to try the E25, E25 brown. I might come in here with some gray as well, but uh, I want a really dark sort of look, but still have a little color to his eye. Yeah, I'm going to come back in here now with some E, E89. This is a really dark shade of brown. Just going to make his eyes look darker, but still give uh, a hint of color to them. Oh my gosh, United says uh, Akbar looks kind of like your mom. Dude. Well, you should give her, uh, uh, take her out for uh, seafood dinner for Mother's Day or something like that. I don't know, it's not even appropriate to take a mother who looks like, looks like a, a crawdad. Okay. Let's move on to another question before I completely embarrass both of us. Um, let's see, something509 asks, who's your favorite writer currently? Ah, uh, gosh, I like a lot of different writers um, for different reasons. I've really been enjoying Dan Slott's work on Amazing Spider-Man. I think that's a lot of fun stuff. Jeff Johns is a friend, and I really enjoy his writing as well. Zeb Wells, uh, he doesn't write as many comic books now, but another great friend, and I really enjoy his writing. He's the guy who wrote the Spider-Man uh, Obama comic that I drew. Uh, he was the writer for that. So we were, we've been longtime friends, so it was fun getting to work with him on that. So those are a couple of the writers. Of course, Peter David. Uh, pretty much the guys I've worked with uh, are, are, are people I like reading because we, we're, we're, we're friends. So Peter David, Chris Claremont, Jay Torres um, are, are, are some others as well. And then Louise Simonson. Loved New Mutants growing up, so she's one of my favorite writers as well. And I've gotten to work with, one, with her on one comic on Iron Age, we did the Dazzler issue, so that was kind of a geek out moment for me, getting to work with one of my one of my favorite writers uh, from when I was growing up uh, on on a on a mutant character. So coming in here with a little R twenty, it's a lighter shade of pink, just to kind of blend into this white here a little bit more. Appreciate the comments there. Thank you, Gregory Goins. Uh, don't worry about that, Todd. Looks good, man. Love the detail. Appreciate that. Can I draw Beast Boy in my next session? Someone asks here. So United asks. Uh, possibly. I can't make any, any guarantees, but uh, I will definitely keep that in mind. Um, I, I do enjoy Beast Boy, and I have worked on some uh, Teen Titans. So, um, what was that? Uh, someone said swipe to the left. And I something about my followers. I'm not, I'm not quite sure if that was directed to me or to someone else, but I appreciate uh, the info. So now I'm coming in with some warm gray. This is a warm... Three W three. I might need to go a little bit darker. So, but this is just kind of initial base. So now we're going for the spots, the spots on on Akbar's head. So this is just to kind of get things get things going here. Um, 
looking at my photo reference, I'm kind of mimicking the places that I'm seeing spots on his head and the angles and, and shapes. They're almost kind of like stripes. Stripes with some s spotty splotches. It's, it's almost like a tiger stripe in some areas, in a sense. So, um, so once I start putting this in here, it starts, starts giving him more texture, as you can see. I appreciate y'all hanging out. This is going a bit longer than I intended, but you know, I, I think, think you guys are having fun, and and I've got a little the extra time to 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 hang out with you guys here. So we'll just keep this rolling, and uh, and um, if you need to bow out and you can't stay, stick around for the whole thing, that's okay. I should be able to post this on on uh, YouTube later on, and I think I've learned how to make sure this can be replayed. The first video. The broadcast I did today can't be replayed, and I think I figured out what I did wrong to uh, keep that from being replayed. So um, uh, hopefully we won't have that problem here with this one. So you have 24 hours to rewatch any of these uh, on on <laughs> on Periscope, excuse me, and uh, and but then like I said, I should be able to save a copy of this and and post it to my uh, my Instagram. Uh, not Instagram. Why am I talking about YouTube? YouTube channel. So I'm coming in with a little darker shade of gray, a little warm gray number five. Punching up these stripes a bit. Again, thanks for all the support, you guys. It always means a lot to see those hearts floating up the side. <coughs> Pardon me. Getting over a little bit of a cold. I did two con conventions back to back. Then I went to celebration, and I think all the three conventions in four weeks started to catch up to me. So I got a slight bit of a cough there. Felt pu pretty puny last week, but now now I'm feeling fine. It's just got a little bit of a cough. So I po apologize for the uh, coughs here um, during the the broadcast. So let's see where am I at. So I feel like this this could use a little bit of maybe a little bit of brown in, in inside these grays here kind of warm the warm grays up a little bit more and and a little more of a subtle sh shading from his the red of orangish reddish brownish pinkish parts of his skin so coming in with a little e13 that's e13 and I'm just experimenting you know I, just, I, I I've, I'm familiar with my colors and I know what most of them can do um, in my collection so I'm just grabbing what I think would work this is no, there's no hard science here with this one. It's just, you know, it just kind of going with the with the feel, with the vibe. So the more you you get to know your 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 art tools, the uh, the more you might get to know what 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 choices you'd want to make with with what colors you, you you'd want to use and how they'll layer and blend together to to match the photo reference of what you're looking at. Let's see how ooh, I missed that one. Was that asked? Were you asking? Someone was asking, "How do I draw Space Ghost?" Was did, did I read that right? Space Ghost. I I, I probably didn't write <laughs> read that right. Please feel free to repost your question if you'd like. So now I'm coming in with some warm zero, some warm gray number zero. I'm gonna put some uh, color into his uh, tunic here, his his military uniform. So I'm starting with a little warm gray zero very light shade of warm gray kind of matches the the photo reference let's see the new 53 says <coughs> hi Todd I wanted to say thanks for your advice on my Ultron drawing on Twitter it means a lot hey no worries uh, glad I could actually uh, offer you some advice it's not often that I can be able to do that you must have caught me at a at a slow part of the day so I'm glad I could help you out there and I'm uh, hope you continue drawing man See, I'm gonna come in with some neutral gray here. It's kind of to contrast some of the warm a little bit, but it's kind of create a sense of shadow. So I'm layering some neutral on top of warm, just just a little bit. And let's see. I want to put some warm gray in his actual skin tone here just to give him a little more depth. It's coming in with a warm two, a warm number two. 
feel like a bingo collar every time I mention what what Copic marker I'm using. Put some of this warm into his eyes. Kind of mutes him out a little bit. All right. Can I carry some of this down into his, his <coughs> uniform? <coughs> Pardon me. So let's see here. See, Corbin asks, do you have a Disneyland pass? No, no, I do not have a Disneyland pass. Um, I used to. Uh, my wife and I got Disneyland passes when we first got married as a wedding gift. And uh, that's been about 15 years now. So I have not been to Disneyland in quite some time. I think I went once before um, since then. Um, so now I'm using some black, some straight up 100 Copic black. Just kind of put a little background in here. Leaving a halo around, uh, around Akbar. So we don't lose those contour lines I spent time inking. Just a personal preference. Never, never worry about having to turn. It's okay to turn your your artboard around. You know your page to get to the angle you need to for your illustration. That is allowed. Don't feel you always have to draw upright. I know some artists have expressed they didn't know they could actually turn the piece of paper. There's no rule that says you can't. Now let's see. Oh, United is asking, what paper are you using? <coughs> my goodness, this cough is coming back. I think my throat's getting a little dried out from all the all the talking. Uh, I'm using a comic book backing board. It's an acid-free comic book backing board. Uh, they work great. Nice, thick art paper. Uh, and you can get them at your local comic shop. Make sure it doesn't have you don't use the glossy side. The glossy side was is kind of a nightmare to draw on. Use the more matte matted finish side. Hope you guys are having fun and appreciate y'all sticking around with me. Thanks for asking the questions. Thanks for all the likes. All right. Yeah, I feel like this um, uniform needs a little something more here. I'm not quite sure what it is. I think I need to go a little bit darker with some of the shadows just to give it a little more pop. So I'm going to go, go with the M3 here. So Gregory Goins says that this uh, this broadcast is making your day from school. It sounds like maybe did you have a rough day at school? If so, stick with it. Things will get better at some point. Let's see, Heather Spam, thank you, Todd, for hanging out with us. You're very kind to your fans. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Appreciate all the support. See, coming back in with a little warm one to kind of blend this all together. It's a little darker than the warm zero, but uh, not as dark as the other colors I've been using. Let's see, Chen, uh, Chen asks, do you ever sell your original pencil or inked comic pages? Uh, yes, I do. I do. You can often find them. You know, I often have my portfolios of my comic book pages at the comic book conventions, and that's a very easy way to uh, buy them. I, I don't have an art dealer, so there's really no other way to get them but others straight from me. me. If you want to shoot me an email, sometimes we can track down a page that you might be looking for or let you know what we have in our collection, but that's kind of hard to do with my work schedule. So I'm trying to get an e-commerce portion, uh, portion set up to my uh, toddknock.com so I can post, um, post uh artwork for sale just right there so if you see a Young Justice or Spider-Man page you want you can just click buy and and move through the steps pay for it and and we'll ship it out to you so um, so let's see I left a word balloon here of course everyone knows what I'm gonna write up here for uh, for Akbar 
fact, I should pencil it in. Make sure all the letters fit in the right way. That's right, that's right, T16 Skyhop, it's a trap. It's a trap. Super classic line from Return of the Jedi. If you think Admiral Akbar, you're gonna think it's a trap. And he really nailed it when he delivered that line in that movie. So let's see, T16 Skyhop asks, which um, movie is my favorite? Uh, which Star Wars movie, I should say. Which Star Wars movie is my favorite? <laughs> For the longest time, it was just straight up Star Wars. Um, but now, over the years, I have discovered I have favorite parts to movies. It's like I don't have one favorite movie. I have favorite parts or scenes. So anything in Moss Eisley, anything with Jabba, anything that has the weird looking aliens, those are my favorite favorite scenes <coughs> in, uh, from the movie. Mo the movies. Um, the Escape from the Death Star, I enjoyed that a lot. Hoth, um, you know, the, the, what, everything going down on Hoth. Uh, Bespin, I really like that. So I guess essentially most of my favorite scenes m might be coming from Return of the Jedi. So, or not Return of the Jedi, uh, pardon me, Empire Strikes Back. So maybe Empire Strikes Back is my, maybe my favorite movie uh, overall. But uh, but I really do enjoy the, the, the Moss Eisley and Jabba palace scenes from Star Wars and Jedi, or New Hope and Jedi, I should say. So let's see, I want to take a little Uniball Sigma white gel pen. Let's see, let's let you read that right side up. There we go. Uh, you can get this at jetpens.com, if not your local art supply store. I want to put uh, just a little, just put some highlights here in Akbar's eye. Kind of gives him a little, little extra life. Kind of cut into the uh, color of his skin, flesh tones, kind of being a, was it, half crawdad, crayfish, lobster, squid looking dude. There's going to be kind of a bit of a, a moistness to his, uh, to his skin, I would imagine. So put a little white there, kind of gives a, a little bit of a glisten. Um, and reflective shine. And a lot of this, the, the choices of where to put these highlights are coming from my photo reference. I'm looking at my photo reference, seeing where there's uh, white and, uh, and, and, and using that reference to uh, maintain that accuracy. To translate that visually. I hope y'all don't mind me repeating your questions. Oh, oh what's that about In-N-Out Burger? Now you're talking my language. If you feel free to repost that, I caught it just as it was uh, fading away. I'm rereading your uh, your questions before I answer them, just for the YouTube channel. So I appreciate y'all putting up with that with me. That's the only reason why I'm rereading your questions, uh, just so that when you watch this on the YouTube channel, you're knowing exactly what question I'm answering and also uh, maybe who, who had asked that question. Oh, in it, oh man, comic dude, In-N-Out Burger or Whataburger? Man, I grew up Texan, so of course I love Whataburger, but I've been living in California for the past many years, and so uh, I even had In-N-Out Burger cater my wedding reception, so I love both. They're two different types of burgers, in my opinion. So uh, I can't say I like one over the other, it's, uh, but I would say probably right now I, I crave a Whataburger more because I can't get to it because uh, I'm in California and In-N-Out Burger is right down the street so I can have it as, as frequently as, as I want. So, uh, so I, miss, I miss getting to have Whataburgers uh, more regularly. So that's one of the great things about going to... Uh, to to the Dallas conventions is uh, I make sure as soon as we get off the plane uh, we we hit a Whataburger um, so I can get my tasty treat. 
Uh, let's see. The base five zero nine. Have I ever drawn Space Ghost? Um, I think I have. I just can't really remember. I'll have to do a Google image search and see if uh, a convention uh, sketch has been posted uh, to see if I've drawn Space Ghost. But I, I certainly can't recall one off the, the top of my head. So, um, oh, and you know what? Of course, it's Star Wars, so i got to put stars here. It's another nice thing about the white gel pen. Just dot in some stars. Dot in as many or as few as you need. Kind of cluster some up and then spread some out. Not as naturally chaotic as I would like for a star pattern, but it works in a pinch for a quick sketch. And this quick sketch has taken us just over an hour. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Can you make a, work, a video showing your, your really early work? Someone asked. Ah, I missed your name there. Uh, sorry about that. Can I show a video of my really early work? Um, that's a possibility. Um, uh, didn't really hadn't really thought of that. Usually, most of my uh, videos are about my um, are me actually drawing pieces. People like seeing me <laughs> actually draw the the art and and put it out there. So um, so no plans right now to show my early work, but it's not to say it's an impossibility or or would never happen. So certainly doesn't hurt to doesn't hurt to ask. Uh, let's see. C. Corbin asks, "How often do you go to art supply uh, to an art supply warehouse?" Um, you know, it depends on how soon I need to replace uh, certain um, art supplies. Uh, some stuff I buy online. Uh, I get better deals online, so I, I order them and have them shipped to me. Some places, uh, some things I like to get right at art supply warehouse and actually try it out and test it out before. Uh, before paying for it, so I, I buy them at, at the store. So I probably go like once, once every two or three months. It's about how frequently I'm able to get there, depending on my work schedule and deadlines, and how how soon I can break away and, and get away and get over there. Comic book dude says I need to try a four by four in and out burger. That means four patties and four slices of cheese. If you're not familiar with a double double or a, a, a in and out burger, a double double is two two patties and two slices of cheese and that's about as, as far as I'm willing to go I, I'm, I'm not as young as I used to be my metabolism isn't the same I can't eat four, a four by four I, I, I don't think I could eat one and survive I should say I think it would kill me so uh, so I have to let those days go go away back when I was younger I could eat <laughs> two Big Macs and a large fry in one sitting while watching my mystery science theater and that was that was uh, a good way to spend a night but now I just can't do it it just just the metabolism isn't my friend in that way anymore. So let's throw my signature on here. But if I could eat a 4x4, four four, I'd, I'd, I'd love to try it. But i got to pace myself. Got to pace myself. All right, and there we go. That's uh, <laughs> Gregory Goins, uh, 508, asks, Do you listen to 80s rock? Yes, I do. I do as... As a, as a child of the 80s, I love 80s uh, music. Thank you, T16. Uh, thanks for the compliment. Uh, great Akbar. I appreciate that. So, yes, I do love 80s music for sure. Um, all types of 80s mu music as well, from the, the rock to the pop to, to 80s rap, it's just 80s in general, from AHA to uh, Mr. Mister and uh, uh, to POW. The one-hit wonders. Love the one-hit wonders. Um, so, um, yes, thank you for the question there. Uh, let's see. Love the eyes. Thank you so much to Beaster 509. So there's the finished Akbar in its entirety. So I'll be posting uh, photos of this on Twitter, my face, Art of Tundra Facebook page, and my um, Instagram as well. Probably my Tumblr, Tumblr also. Possibly my DeviantArt account. 